Thank you for coming on. Thank you for connecting, you know, reaching out. I saw that you said that you had joined Sunrise's Trap Key in Columbus. Amazing. Loved every moment. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. How was that? Was that, that wasn't the first time uh, you met was, him, was actually. it? Actually. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. How did that, um, how did well, that come about? Oh, I followed him. I'm not sure whose page I followed him. It might have been Esso the God, um, whom I've done Qigong okay. before, but My I followed him and saw Columbus, and I was like, oh, I got to pull up. So it was a vibe. It was definitely fun. I enjoyed it. Nice. Nice. And is Columbus a, a long ways away no, from No, I'm in you? Columbus. Yep, yep. Okay, so you're already there. Awesome. 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 So it was nothing to pull up. <laughs> awesome. And you say Esso, so Mark English, you had already yes. been familiar um, with Mark English? He, I, met, I first heard about him through the Brown Girl Yoga Tribe. I was teaching yoga with them um, virtually, and he came on and did a Qigong mm -hmm. session with us, and then I did a couple sessions with him as well. So that's been amazing, too, to start on that journey of Qigong. So, yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah. How has that journey of Qigong and that form of like energy cultivation been new for you? Or how, what has it brought you? Do Definitely you feel? it's helped me with my discipline. Um, that's been something that mm -hmm. I've been striving to be more of through my whole life journey. Um, so definitely that helped me because you being there for an hour um my yoga mm -hmm. i wasn't the person who would do like hour-long yoga sessions so that's why i love like my own flow mm -hmm. but with the qigong doing those slow movements and being in them for a whole hour but also feeling the energy like feeling the energetic change and the mm -hmm. release is so powerful so i definitely love it um i'm going to continue taking sessions with him and definitely I incorporated like before I got on here I was doing some reverse breathing and that is so yeah. powerful to calm the body oh my gosh so I, I incorporate that a lot reverse breathing so yeah awesome awesome wow that is awesome you know it is pretty powerful in that practice and what would you say was the difference between doing qigong with like Mark English and then doing trap chi mm, with sunrise. Well, <laughs> definitely, you know, the music, that was a vibe, the instrumentals, which I love instrumentals, I love music. So that was really, really dope. Um, and yeah, I mean, that was the main thing, the music. Um, and then also mm. it was in person. So that was a vibe and getting to connect with the people there. Like he had us do uh, like um, an energetic hello so with our partners we had to do this energetic hello oh my god it was like off the chain i was like whoa this energy is crazy so yeah and then we got to see him perform live which was really dope. his music is super mm -hmm. uplifting and just bars so i love that yeah. awesome awesome man shout out to family that's family man shout out to that man <laughs> so when you were doing trap chi you know i love how he says the body follows the breath and the breath mm -hmm. follows the beat. So, you know, doing Tai Chi to trap music, that was yeah. something totally it was, new, I I'm felt sure. so cool. Yeah. <laughs> like doing the movements, the mm. music, like being, you know, being in tune with the mm. beats, like that was really fun. It was a good time. Yeah, yeah. And when you talked about doing Qigong and really feeling the energy, was that the t first time that you felt energy like that? Or, or can you recall ever mm -hmm. feeling energy on that level before? I feel like maybe there might have been some times, but probably not to that level, to that extent. Um, the level of clarity okay. and just like ease that I felt after. Um, I felt that when I do like mm -hmm. intense yoga sessions. But again, I wasn't always that mm -hmm. person to do long sessions. I kind of just like do what my body feels but being with the discipline right. of being in that session for a longer period and holding the poses and then doing poses that i've never done mm -hmm. like 
movements or the horse stance, which is crazy, like 60 <laughs> times of that. <laughs> insane um so it definitely felt really great um and you know energizing the body with the breath is really powerful to do that the discipline to do that and, and be in that for an hour yeah for sure. for sure you know speaking of breath raven i saw something that you put on your page it was this wonderful post about how concentration 100 percent on the breath frees you you know so what inspired you to write that and how have you felt that you have found liberation mm. through respiration as well it were? i think it's important um for me i've not sought traditional therapy so i had to learn mm. how to release things from the body um with all different types mm. of mechanisms and breath was one of the first things moving my body and in turn when you move the body you're flowing with your breath and it's naturally mm. happening so mm. releasing with the breath allowing that to calm my nerves that's just been life-changing and what was the question you asked again <laughs> oh yeah so, yeah you, uh, yeah you said uh, on your uh -huh, breath, go sorry. ahead um, how it frees you yes because in that moment yeah you're not thinking when you focus on the breath when you bring the attention back to the breath consistently you're not thinking and you know when when we're in yoga i always remind people like those thoughts they may come and go but allow them to pass or observe them they're there for you to observe without judgment but allow them to pass and come back to the breath so breathing you know, mm -hmm. you know when you're breathing properly you truly have to focus so in that moment, you're letting go of all these distractions, of all the outside thoughts that you might have, which everything externally, like those are the things that affect our nervous system. So when, you know, we're in meditation or when we're in a breath focused practice, it really does free us and allow us to just be in the body. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I agree, you know, 100%. And it brings me to mind because they say that with electromagnetism, when you increase the electricity, you also increase the magnetism, you know, like things start coming to you, almost like your gravitational pull is more powerful. So when it comes to the breath, Raven, how have you seen that, like you said, you let go of those thoughts, you're not thinking. With that letting go of distraction, how does that increase mm. your attraction? Well, in life? I would say, and this is something that I definitely got from my professor. He's on here, Herbal Bush House, but he always tells us, like, don't think, just be the energy that you are. So I embody that to this day. And it really helps me when you be the energy that you are, everything comes to you because you're naturally being without doubt, without fear, without the distraction. And then you're able to manifest those things. And, you know, people are attracted not just people but things and just the energetic flow is magnetized towards you because you're no longer blocking yourself there are no longer these blockages and obstacles and yeah i just feel like honestly just personally speaking i've stopped smoking for it's been four weeks now now i've stopped smoking for a while before oh. herb um but i've stopped doing that that for personal reasons and also spiritual but now that I've done that like I just realized I'm much more focused and clear and again because when you're putting smoke in the body you're robbing yourself of that oxygen so I've noticed mm. things have just been flowing like crazy for me to the point that I'm like mm, I could mm. but I have all of these other beautiful energetic practices that I can use to give me that same high vibration and also just you know soothe and ease my nervous system so I've noticed things literally are flowing in every aspect and you know I'm very proud of myself for that but I'm also um, grateful because I know that I am an example and a guide for others and that magnetism just with my business with my energy mm -hmm. with my creative energy and just my focus is definitely multiplied. Wow. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. What a manifestation, you know, congratulations. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, that definitely sounds like a big shift, you know, like a big move. Because, I mean, before last month, like, how long had you been with it in that, like, um, how long had um, that been in your routine? So it wasn't daily? every single day. I did frequently take breaks. However, I started when I was about 23. And um, <laughs> I always say, like, I'm grateful for it, <laughs> you know, because it is, it is, herb it is, it is a healing herb you know but and i needed it i felt in that time because i was dealing with a lot of things based off of family trauma so, so mm -hmm. removing myself because honestly i had to remove myself you know we cannot heal in the same environment um that's been a very difficult process you know when the holidays come around mm -hmm. it's difficult but even um you know unlearning and relearning and not celebrating certain things that are not aligned with my indigenous ancestors has helped me also through through that and through these processes but um just coming back into myself and learning who i am without mm -hmm. really using who i've come from and where i've come from as an excuse to you know remain in that state because i also come from a family with addiction issues as well um, so mm. it's definitely been a process to just fully let go, but I know I'm gifted as well in my dreams. So noticing how mm -hmm. much I've been dreaming lately and <laughs> just all the messages that come through, I'm like, okay, spirit is like, nah, like you need to, it's time. And I've been wanting to completely let it go, but it was just one of those things that's like pleasure, but how pleasure I've received in exchange for letting something go has been, you know, amazing. Wow. Wow. So that definitely you see the contrast. You see, you see what on the other side, you know, wow, this is interesting because when you talked about, you said there were personal reasons, but there were also spiritual reasons. And that feeling of being aligned with the ancestors. Is that along the lines of those spiritual reasons or were there something yes. else? Yes, um, definitely because like my grandmother, she dreamt a lot and I grew up in a spiritual household and my mother dreamed a lot as well. Um, but yeah, being able to be calm and at ease allows me to tap more into my creative energy because I would use that sometimes to, you know, tap in and also get into that. But when it comes to my dreams, I can go to sleep and ask spirit, help me, uh, let me know what, what else I need to create or, or, you know, how I need to navigate this or that. And I've noticed now, like the answers will come to me in my dreams. So um, just what? knowing like before there's times that I wouldn't dream and I've made poems out of my dreams. Like I've literally manifested mm -hmm. things. So for me, that's a powerful aspect and just again having that clear mind taking action immediately you know rather than feeling like I should roll up and then go <laughs> you know like all of these things so it's definitely helped me and just knowing like our ancestors may have used that but at the same time there's so many other things to elevate the spirit besides that ways to use it wow wow taking action. I love that because, you know, we were just talking about attraction and half of the word attraction mm -hmm. is action, you know? So it's like to attract, we must take action. So I love that. I love that it's, it's increased your game in that way. And when you say that you've had that connection, you know, in your dreams with spirit, have you always had it like that? Like, has it been like that since childhood yeah. that you feel that connection has been there? I'm not sure, honestly. I feel like, and that could have been the cause of like other things. Cause I know I've dreamt when I was younger, but I think because I've grown so much in my spirituality, now the level and then also remembering, like um, even using, you know, the other herbs that I work with for memory and focus and clarity those things have all helped me. And now when I get up in the middle of the night, if I have a dream, I'll get up and immediately put it in my notes. But even like last night I dreamt mm. and I didn't write anything down, but I still was able to remember it today. So I feel like um, now that I'm older, 
I think it's too, you know, I would have dreams, but they would be all kind of nonsense and or weird or whatever. But now they're more definitely uh, focused on like what's going on subconsciously and in my purpose and all of that. Awesome. Awesome. That's beautiful. You know, I really, I enjoy seeing others that have that connection, you know, because there has been so many times myself where I didn't understand dreams. I had dreams and, and even wanted to have a deeper relationship with my dreams, almost to have a lucid dream. Like, have you ever had one of those dreams where you were lucid, like you were aware that you were dreaming? Um, I don't know if I have. I feel like I feel like maybe because, you know, sometimes you realize like something's going on and it's just like, I'm OK, like this is not real. So I feel like I've had those mm -hmm. moments, but I don't think I've ever really been in the dream where I'm like, OK, I can control this because it's just a dream. So I'm not there yet, but okay. I haven't really, um, you know, taken the time and power to like go deeper into that. But because my dreams have been so powerful, I'm like, OK, I think. I know that I should definitely continue working with my dreams. That's why even I've started like speaking an intention, like may this come to me in my dream and it's been working. So I love it. Okay. So with those intentions that you speak, you know, speaking those words into existence, do you mm -hmm. use affirmations as well, Raven? Oh, snap. What, what kind of affirmations do you, mm -hmm. do you use most often? Definitely. Um, I am loved everything that I have is within me. Um, mm -hmm. I have an affirmation. So with my herbal brand, which is I Rebel Tea Society, I send out affirmations. And one of them is a road opener affirmation. So it's my roads are open. My path is clear. No obstacles present. I have no fear. I am guided and protected front to back. My abundance never lacks. Woo! <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's, you know, that's a poem. And it's also like, like, like a magical spell, you know? Like, words have that power as well. It's like you're, you're infusing yeah. it with that energy. People, your voice is the most powerful. So, you know, even when we go to other spiritualists to do spiritual work for us, like your voice is the most powerful because you are working with your ancestral line, your DNA, you know, the power of your voice, you're hearing it, you know, and then it's going, it's going into your system, into your energy. So definitely. Yeah. yeah. So when you're working with like affirmations or even mantras, or the repetition of these words, you know? Do you often speak them? Do you write them? Or do you listen to them? Which, which mm. method do you use so most often? So speaking them, but I enjoy writing and reading them. Yeah, so okay. I might write them because like I have my notebook where I journal and I'll go through and then I have written on certain days a whole bunch of affirmations so i just will carry my notebook with me and read my notebook like sometimes instead of reading a book that's my book and i go through um mm -hmm. so yeah writing them and then sometimes like with my poetry that's been a great way for me to activate my throat chakra and speak up so i realized like a lot of my poems they end or just throughout there's positive affirmations so i may speak about things that i've gone through but then at the end there's always like a powerful message so i've heard those mm -hmm. and so in the car sometimes i will listen to them um sometimes to help me memorize them but that's always very powerful too to hear my own voice and just hear that message and be reminded yeah yeah it is something about your own voice you know being played back to you or just listening to yourself it's like you're listening to you know, yeah. like your higher self talking to you, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. I love it. You know, these methods and modalities. And for instance, another one of them, which you were speaking about earlier was yoga. And I haven't really heard too much about trauma sensitive yoga. So like trauma yoga or trauma based yoga, actually. The trauma-based yoga, if, if nobody knew about it, mm -hmm. how would you explain it to a so, person? So trauma-sensitive yoga or based yoga is basically, you know, 
talk therapy, again, does not work for everybody or other mechanisms. And so we store a lot of emotions in the body. And this is where it manifests usually at dis-ease and it balances. So typically, we all know about like the fight or flight response. So when we're in situations, when we deal with trauma, we either go into the fight mode, the flight mode, or freeze. And sometimes it is the freeze mode where we shut down, especially like in childhood when people are living with you know the people that cause them trauma because where do you, where else do you have to go like you can't go anywhere so you freeze so then that energy stays stored in and you feel like this tension and things going on so with the trauma sensitive yoga we really emphasize choice and focusing on the breath right because a lot of times we might have some anxious energy there that we need to move out or ground that energy down um, so like focusing on the breath or things like bringing the energy down by looking at the feet, feeling the feet, or just being, you know, doing more grounding root poses. Um, but mm -hmm. with this type of yoga, the, the focus is choice. And so our language is very much mm -hmm. based around choice instead of like, do this, do that, go, you know, go here. It's like, when you're ready, if this feels okay for you. If you are in pain, it's okay to move out of this. If you need to drop into child's pose, that's mm -hmm. okay. Um, you know, and giving people the option to slowly move into more difficult poses or poses maybe they thought they couldn't do and then come out of them. And also focusing on like the time frame. Um, you know, because sometimes when we're stuck in a situation, we don't know when we're going to get out of it. So counting down like, okay, five, four, three, two, one. Um, so, you know, just first diving into that sense of ease, because a lot of people don't really know what ease feels like. So allowing them to experience that, mm -hmm. but then, you know, going into the more difficult or longer poses, and then allowing them to come out of that and see like, you are powerful, you do have the choice, you can do this, but it's your practice. Awesome. Awesome. And, you know, it sounds like you're saying giving people the option to move from an uncomfortable position or situation mm -hmm. when you're ready. Like when you're ready, when when you feel you're ready to move, then you move, yeah. like giving and yourself the choice. Certain poses, depending on the population, we may not do because some poses or bringing attention to certain areas may be triggering. So we'll do more poses centered mm -hmm. around that um, or just be mindful of the language and offering mm -hmm. different, um, different, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I can't think of it right now. <laughs> but modifications, that's what I'm thinking okay. of, modifications, yeah. Cool, cool. So how do you feel like, the trauma-based yoga practice or the trauma-sensitive yoga, how does that translate into our relationship with ourselves mm. and even our relationships with others? So definitely, I can speak personally for me. Um, I'm very grateful that that's the first yoga training that I got into because I had to learn about my own trauma and be validated in that. So when you get to be in a safe space with people who validate and acknowledge and give you that sense of safety and choice is very powerful. Um, it does allow you to reconnect with your body. You know, sometimes when we have co coping mechanisms or different like little um, quirks or behaviors where we might not notice, we're like, we're not in our body. We're just trying to distract ourselves. This, this practice has allowed people to come back into their body to come back into their breath to realize oh my stomach is tight I'm not breathing properly or I'm clenching my jaw and you know just coming back into that sense of ease and then allowing you to approach and be in other spaces with other people where your energy is more centered and calm and you also can establish boundaries because you learn how to establish boundaries with your own practice like okay actually I don't want to do this right now, or I only want to do five minutes today, or I'm just going to do what's comfortable. So this mm -hmm. also translates to doing what makes you feel comfortable when you're around other people and also being able to be a safe space and give other people choice as well. Right. 
Right. Oh man, yeah. you know, so healing. So heal. Yeah. Yeah. There's it reminds me of the saying, it's like they say you have to feel it to heal it, but you cannot heal mm -hmm. what you don't mm -hmm. reveal. You know? Exact. Yeah. 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 So this really feels like a powerful practice that will reveal a lot of things for us, you know when it comes to having those types of relationships where you were talking about the the triggers you know certain things that come up there was something interesting i saw you put up raven and it was like trauma bonding versus authentic mm. love you remember that know. was that me <laughs> it was a it was a post that you put on your story but you were just talking about it it had different things on what trauma bonding looks like and then it had another list of things with what authentic love looks like. And I thought that was interesting because I don't know about you, but I feel like there's been many relationships I've been in that felt like we had trauma bonded somehow. Yeah. Have you ever felt like that? What, what was that like, yeah. if you can recall? Um, well, I would say, you know, when you are not sometimes holding yourself accountable, we can be comfortable with other people who are doing the same things like using the same coping mechanisms or having the same behaviors um, when it comes to like attitudes or you know not giving grace or um, you know just speaking almost like in a gossiping sense sometimes when it comes to things we've been through mm -hmm. versus looking for the solution um, mm -hmm and you know growing and and choosing like okay well what can we do to better ourselves what can we do to heal this what can we do to address you know the attitude in this moment and not just normalize it or think um you know this is just how i am and truly mm -hmm. be, you know making sure that the relationships that we're in are helping us to grow and serving us in a way that we can experience ease, but it's not just about, you know, remaining stagnant or being comfortable, you know, being able to truly show love with grace, like understanding, um, but also being able to lovingly address things, you know, in a loving way where it's like mm -hmm. still that unconditional acceptance, but also, you know, having boundaries for how you feel in the situation and how you're growing right right that's important you know that's definitely important to know because you know there were certain times where i felt like i couldn't see a way out you know of a certain relationship a situation or circumstance that i had found myself in and like you said you know just accepting that responsibility but but having that love you know unconditional how do you feel like you were able to, if you were able to find your way out of a trauma bonding experience, you know, because it seems like that can keep mm -hmm. people together for a long time, Ooh. you know? Man, well, um, I feel like sometimes it's taken something really bad to happen for me to remove myself from situations. Um, because sometimes we can be very loving or give our give other people too much grace. And then also, I feel like, for me, there's like a limit, like, you know, maybe like I was loving myself. But there was like, there was like a threshold. And then there was a point where it's like, oh, but if you do this, I'll, I'll go. But I'll to tolerate mm. so much. But then if you do this, I'll go. And that's kind of how it's been in you know, being alone, I said, like, now I'm like sober, celibate and single, like, <laughs> it's, it's been a journey of truly loving myself. And realizing, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to give myself all of the things I need, because, you know, I was a person who realized I was dealing with a lot of codependency issues. And this all stemmed mm -hmm. from mostly childhood, because what we don't realize is our parents are our training wheels for relationships. So when we're in situations, they may seem like, oh, this is not as bad as that, or they're giving me the love I want, but also the, the per person or the people that we need today, a lot of times we outgrow them tomorrow, especially if you're someone continuously growing and 
leveling yourself up, especially spiritually wise. You know, sometimes people can be great for comfort, but they're not great for your spiritual growth. So, um, yeah, I, I can admit that a lot of times it's taken for something, you know, a certain point of disrespect to happen for me to remove myself. But now that I'm on this journey, mm -hmm. I've been like, okay, these are these are the boundaries. And honestly, I'm like, I'm very like uninterested. Now. <laughs> I'm just like, actually, there there's so many things that I'm aspiring to and also just my lifestyle. And I know there's definitely, you know, amazing people out there. But sometimes it's like when, you know, sometimes we accept who comes to us, like who is magnetized towards us. But a lot of times that they're not for us to, you know, accept and have relationships with. They're just a around. They just happen to be around or convenient. Um, but I think it's really, really important to be mindful of who is actually aligned and can help you grow um, you know into your the best version of yourself and who and who can you also help grow but without it crippling you in the process right right absolutely you know i agree and i love what you said raven mm -hmm. i've never heard it put this way before you said our parents are like our training mm -hmm. wheels for relationships wow that is a powerful analogy it's like riding a bicycle you know before you get to just take off you got sometimes you use those training wheels you know so it's like having our parents be that for us to to be that example of our relation that that is crazy that really actually just yeah. it made a lot yeah. of sense you know yeah and this it's been a journey because i think so many of us we deal with the example that our parents set or our family sets, like that's our foundation. That's what we grow with for the most part, 18 years of our life is not more. So it's such a journey to change those patterns that we've seen and felt, you know, and been immersed in. So that's definitely, you know, been a powerful journey. Um, I would say I've been on this journey for about five years of just um, self healing, you know, going no contact and just doing all of the things to dive into the holistic field, you know, and help other people. But like I said, mm -hmm. it was so critical and important for me to take the trauma sensitive yoga teacher training first so that I could understand myself and be validated um, so that, you know, I. I wouldn't project things on to other people when I was helping them heal and guide them um, and just, you know, releasing that energy and understanding, like, I'm not wrong, wrong you know, and what I, what I went through, I am seen and what I went through is valid. Um, so definitely that was powerful and needed. Nice. So just to have that added integrity, you know, to be able to not, be in projection and to have a deeper connection you know with the people that you're dealing with you know the people that you're teaching yeah <laughs> the people that you're reaching you're you such know? a poet yourself i'm yeah. cracking up because i always see it. like okay he's totally a poet let's go <laughs> yeah you already know it you know so, so oh my goodness i love what you said raven when you said um the scs you know sober celibate and single <laughs> <laughs> and you said it's, it's been um has it been five years oh, no, of that no, no. Of, of celibacy <laughs> like, no it's just been five years of being on this journey um so in 2018 i used to be a social worker i was working with people living with hiv and aids helping them to reduce barriers to their care and with that like in that uh field is where i kind of learned um just my conflict of interest when it came to big pharma and all of that and that really helped me dive deeper into mm -hmm. the natural path but um it's been honestly since earlier this year um i don't want to put all my business out there but <laughs> since earlier this year um and i would say i'm about to be 30 in february so i started a 90 days till 30 uh list 
And I didn't even like intend to stop smoking. I was already celibate around that time, but um, it just happened. Like things have just been flowing. And now I'm in less than 60 days. So I plan on knocking more accomplishments off my list, but um, just leveling it up. Cause I'm like, this is about to be a new chapter. I've learned so much. I definitely feel like my twenties, I accomplished so much, but I also went through so much of like undoing the first 18 years and even a little bit after that uh undoing those patterns and that um generational trauma it's always Mm -hmm. going to be a continuing Mm -hmm. journey you know because we still i i can say i still you know wish that i had the relationship that i desire with my family but i've definitely found my soul family Mm -hmm. and i feel like you know traveling and obviously social media has been a great um opportunity for for me to meet some amazing divine people so yeah i would i would say it's been definitely a little over 90 days um and Mm -hmm. and going so for sure for sure you know awesome and that's that's no easy task you know especially today's times when there's an abundance of shall we say distractions you know all around and many different forms of attraction but like they say when whatever you focus Mm -hmm. on the longest grows the strongest you know it's no wonder raven that all these things are like popping off for you because your Mm -hmm. attention is placed elsewhere it seems you know so what in what ways do you feel like having this celibacy has given you more energy or given added more fuel you know well, to your I'm focus definitely just pouring all of that energy into me um and not having that uh i don't know that tie or that connection where you know sometimes i i can definitely say i've lost myself being in some relationships not completely but just putting so much energy and attention to like even my schedule like working around that or um you know focusing on just kind of, you know, like impressing or, you know, trying to show up for that person more than myself. And honestly, I can say I need all of my energy because I'm still healing, you know, like it's such a process. And when you are constantly immersed in situations uh, where like growing up, because growing up, I kind of had to walk around on eggshells, you know, that turns into that people pleasing kind of energy. So I felt I carried that mm. into other relationships. So now when you focus on just pleasing yourself, you know, it it teaches you to come out of that because then you're more comfortable saying no. And, you know, one of the best ways to see a person's true energy is to tell them no or just you know, remove yourself. Mm. So that's been, that's been important for me. Like, I just like, I'm just like, I ain't entertaining nobody. Actually, I'm entertaining myself. And it's great for me because I've always been in the books. I've always been like, I'm okay being alone. Like, you know, things can get lonely, but if you're, if you're focused on your passion and your purpose and the relationships that are healthy, that you do have platonically with sisters, with, you know, soul tribe with my clients, um, you know, that's, that's taking all my focus and my energy. So it's like, I don't have, I don't really have time to be lonely. I, I'm actually pursuing the things that I want and investing the time and energy to grow my mental so that I can be, you know, at my highest level. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's like your investments are earning compound interest, you know, cause you're putting it into yourself. They say that's the best investment you can make, you know, what, Somebody, you remind me, Raven, somebody told me, they said, you are like the number one entity Mm -hmm. that you need to entertain, Mm -hmm. you know? And when they told me that, it was like, I I never looked at things the same. It was like, wow, okay, I'm the number, I'm the entity I should be entertaining right now. And being conscious of your own energy, that is tremendous. Can, Can you say that one more time? That really shook me. You said, the power of saying no that you can really see someone's energy yeah. by when you say uh, no. Could uh, you say you that definitely, again? Like, I think the best way to see someone's true energy and character is by telling them no. And their response will tell you a lot. 
Um, and sometimes, you know, like when we mm. think about when we're in like the honeymoon stage of a relationship, you know, a lot of things you're just like, oh yeah, okay, I got you. You know, you're doing everything to make sure everything is nice and pretty and proper. But sometimes, you know, and even like, again, like centering your schedule sometimes around to make things comfortable or, you know, because you want to see that person often versus like, no, actually, let me remain disciplined. Um, because the minute that, you know, I let go of myself, then if you can't love yourself properly, how can you truly love someone else? If you don't keep your word to you, why would you expect somebody else to keep their word to you? You know, so it's a lot when mm. it comes to self love, like discipline is one of the most important things. And we don't realize that and discipline is saying no. And it will show you it will show you other people's true intentions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all around you know i feel like also with saying no you're not just saying no yes but you're also <laughs> saying yes yes absolutely <laughs> you're saying yes to so many things and it's true because when we let go of things and we're like no that's not for me nah i'm good you open the door to so many things so many other things yeah yeah, yeah. i agree you know and raven when it comes to saying no and also saying yes what was the test for you when it came to switching to plant-based? Because I don't know about your lifestyle, but have you so always been plant-based? And I will say I got about like two more minutes and then I have to go because I have a job to do. But, and sorry, I'm, I have okay. to take okay. short because this has been amazing. Um, we can always do a part two later. But <laughs> um, I started going plant-based when I was a social worker. So I was doing social work from 2015 to 2018. And in that last year or so, is when I started transitioning to like pescatarian and then going more alkaline. Um, so yeah, that's been powerful. And I've had to learn like, you know, a lot of people are like, well, it's expensive, da, da, da. but like, when I go to the grocery store, I have to say, no, we're not getting those tortilla chips today. We're going to spend that same $3 on more fruit. So when we want a snack, we go eat this fruit <laughs> in the house. And you know, just like learning to try the things that I haven't tried before so that I do have the things that I enjoy, you know, so it's opening the door for more energy, for more life force energy, um, for more ease in my nervous system, more positiveness. Um, is that even a word? Positivity. But <laughs> um, it's been very powerful because, again, you're saying no to those things that may have bring you joy or pleasure, but you're saying yes um, to the things that are really going to elevate your body, mind, and your spirit. And you're saying no to dis-ease and imbalance and uncertainty and fear and doubt. And you're saying yes to, you know, your security, your confidence, your integrity, your morals, just all of that. Yeah. Yes, 100%. But thank you for this testimony. Thank you for that message. It's much needed. And, you know, since just for the sake of time, since you do have to go, you on the go, can you just let everybody know where they can find your services? You know, if you have anything to provide, let people know where yeah, you would absolutely. like them to go to receive that. So again, my name is Raven. Um, some people know me as Divine Nature. And on here, if you tap the little triangle at the top or a little arrow at the top, you can follow me at Heal with Divine Nature. Um, you can also follow my herbal page, which is I Rebel Tea Society, spelled E Y E Rebel T T E A Society. Um, and I do offer one on one virtual and in person yoga sessions. I'm in Columbus, Ohio. So if anybody is ever out this way, I have an in home yoga studio. Um, I also offer holistic herbal consultations. So I work one on one, you get a consultation, you fill out an intake, um, you get a 30 day herbal supply, as well as bi weekly follow up, nutritional guidance, spiritual and elemental guidance, and an herbalist for life. Um, I'm also a full spectrum doula. And I am the plug when it comes to fertility. So if you have been wanting to be more fertile i got you covered um but definitely i'm the plug for all things when it comes to like imbalances and helping you be healthy whole and just guide you through that healing journey so again heal with divine nature or i rebel tea society but you can dm me um 
my services are not up on the website. I'm very like underground with everything. So just tap in. If there's anything you need, I got you. Blessings. Blessings. Thank you for opening that channel. You know, thank you for opening that door for, for more people to explore. And just yes. appreciate you coming on here, Raven. Thank you for this talk. And hopefully we'll talk soon. All right. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.